Welcome back to New Rockstars. The Ahsoka finale is hours away right now. It's uh, crazy, and we still have no idea how Dave Filoni plans to wrap this thing up. So today, we are going to talk about how this show could end, what mysteries might go unresolved, one, which ones might finally get answered, and all of our final major question marks before Tuesday's finale of Ahsoka. This is a new show on New Rockstars that we're calling The Sneak Peek, where we take the temperature of whatever we're watching while we head into the next episode or look ahead to the next week in nerddom. I'm Eric Voss, and joining me is Tommy Bechtold yes. from the galaxy far, far away. Sneak peeks from a sneak freaks. Here we go. What's going to happen? Sneaking around. What am I in high school again? I'm uh, so glad to be here with you, Eric. You know, I'll do, you, we can call the show whatever we want, but when it's you and I, I simply call it Growing Down. <laughs> Growing Down with my bud. I'm so glad that you and I have had some opportunities to talk about Ahsoka this yes. season over on the Break Room channel. It's always been like a blast. I'm sorry I've yeah. been so sleep deprived, I feel like, every hey. time we've talked about it. Uh, yeah, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Uh, I'll take you in any condition. You know, fully <laughs> rested, sleep deprived. Three quarter shields, thirty percent shields, shields at eight percent. I can handle it. <laughs> let's let's talk about what's coming up on on the calendar right now. This Ahsoka finale, uh, Tommy. What are your biggest questions heading into this final episode? All right. So here's my biggest question going into the finale, Eric. There are a lot of storylines that need to be wrapped up, but specifically Balin. How are they going to wrap up his story when there seems to be so much ground to cover? And you know, there's the unfortunate reality of the real life actor. What, what, yeah. what do you think? What do you think is? Are we going to see a full story arc? Yeah, I you know we got to pour one out for Ray Stevenson. Yeah. He did so good on this show, and like whatever whatever happens with this character in the finale, yeah. I think he just deserves a standing O for yeah. everything he did. Yeah, and I'm I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, I love being in this state of mystery mm. uh, because on one hand, it seems like he is the most mysterious character, the one character who's like a central journey we're still asking a lot of questions at yeah. about and he really could go to any number of interesting hidden powers in the star wars universe we've talked about bindu we've talked about the gods of mortis specifically the father or the son of mortis who might mm -hmm. live on in some form or abeloth the mother figure from star wars legends who kind of served them there's a wellspring priestesses that i feel like i might be the only one who talks about here there's uh there's like zepho and kujit you know from from the ancient ancient mm, past yeah um I'm also, though, wondering if the reason why we've seen so much of Balin's skull is they just included every wonderful take of Ray Stevenson because yeah. they knew this is his final role. And, yeah. and then now they're kind of setting him up to be an interesting character because they want to show all this great acting. But we might not get some big answers about okay. what is calling to him. We might just hear, like, a voice that's a whisper in his head, and then he kind of goes off into the sunset, and that's it. Yeah, I I I, I agree with that last sentiment. That is... uh. I think, first of all, that's a wonderful instinct for the for the creatives to have had, given the performance. I also, I think they have done a nice job of setting up that he sees an end to his master-apprentice relationship with Shin. You know, like, clearly, in the episode seven, there's, like, there's a literal separation, and he gives her a party. He even says, this is my last lesson, or one last lesson, or mm -hmm. something like that. So, you know, I, I think... You're right. We may not get like this satisfying conclusion to the character, but I do think that, it, not to be cliche, the journey of the character has been the the reward. And and I hope, you know, via um, you know the art, uh, comic books, and, and, and novelizations, and, and, and video games, or whatever or animation, we can that character Ray Stevenson breathe life into it. That I think it can live on in other iterations. Uh, as a tribute to him, rather than being, you know, rather than there being a, um, uh, just a kind of like hard stop. So, so yeah. yes, M more Balin, please b b bail us out because I need more Balin. I'm, I'm bonkers yeah. for Balin. Uh, all right. So here's my other question. Cause a great fear of mine, as you know, Eric, is my fear of abandonment. So who's getting off Peridia? The Purple seem to have just bounced, which I could understand. When you send a bunch of uh, World War II bomber ships uh, to start shooting at them, they bounced. Also, I, I know that the, the, this wasn't the effect. Them 
bouncing made me laugh so hard. Like that, like that scene. I know it was supposed to be kind of funny. Hugh Yang being like the pergola are offering cover, and then there was them just going <laughs> was <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't That's, think yeah. yeah. I don't think Thrawn is uh, selling tickets for the Star Destroyer for rides. It's not Elon's uh, Hyperloop in Vegas where you can. Uh, <laughs> You could ride in a tiny Tesla for two minutes. But I, yeah, who's getting off Peridia? I think they're all getting off Peridia. Mm -hmm. I think this episode is going to, I think the finale episode is going to take us back to the Star Wars main galaxy. Because I don't think we're done with Hera and Jason yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think we're done with, like, even Ziono and, uh, maybe, maybe we're done with Ziono and Mon Mothma. But I feel like we got to have Hera, we got to have Zeb. Like, they wouldn't have created Zeb for, for the Mandalorian. We'll talk about cameos in a second. But, yeah, yeah. I think they're all getting off of Peridia. They're all getting out of this galaxy. And we might have, like, a final battle or, like, the setup of a future season that's setting uh, things up in the main galaxy on, like, the planet of Dathomir or something mm -hmm. like that. My hope is that the final shot of this season uh, is something either of Ezra on Lothal or Thrawn on Dathomir. Yes. Well, either one would be... Be thrilling. You, now you kind of alluded to this in your answer, but do you think Filoni is going to get the whole Rebels gang together? I, is there a chance we get a Kane and Force Ghost? We already talked about Zeb, which I, you know, I've come a long way on Zeb. You know, through watching all of Rebels for for a project for the channel, I I, I went from being a Zeb uh, hater to a Zeb uh, okayer. I, I now kind of enjoy Zeb. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Zeb, what a mess he is yeah, yeah. <laughs> throughout Rebels. He's just, he, he gets shamed for his stink. Yes. Like, I don't know what it is about Dave Filoni and calling people stinky, but like, Zeb gets called stinky all the time. The Night Sisters are calling Sabine stinky. Yes. And you know, just by the look of the trash that Ezra has piled on himself, that that guy does not wash his beard. No. There's no freaking way he does. No, no like, way. That guy's a trash monster. So my hope is that he gets a big hug from Zeb, and Zeb is like, oof. Now you're the one who stinks. Like, I yes. want people to talk about smell more. Um, yeah, I I think we have to have a Rebels read. We started to get a piece of it here uh, where Ahsoka... It's just interesting to see Ahsoka hug all these people because, like, yeah. if you rewatch Rebels, she didn't get a ton of time with everybody. No. You know, yeah. she kind of had that reunion with uh, Ezra in the World Between Worlds. I wish they had talked about it in yeah. this episode, in episode 7 of Ahsoka. Be like, hey, remember the last time I saw you was, like... We were in some other ethereal space, and she could have been like, I was just back there, and I saw Anakin. Like, I, I want them to compare notes. People just keep not talking about things. Like, Sabine, she's like, we'll talk about it later. It feels like I'm watching Tommy Wiseau in the room. Yeah. Like, I don't want to talk about yeah. it. Like, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's like, talk about it. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I think, like, I, I just had a video come out on the New Rockstars channel on Friday where I talked about, I made the case for how we could see Freddie Prince Jr. in live action is Kanan yes. and the world between worlds. I think everything is set up for it. I think we've been seeing that uh, a publicity photo of Freddie Prince Jr. in like a leather jacket on the dashboard. I think that's what they used mm -hmm. for Kanan. They just penciled in a bit of a goatee or whatever. Yes. So I, I we got to see like a, a full Rebels Ghost Crew reunion. So producer John and I were having a conversation yesterday talking about Filoni. And I think that you can tell that he works out some of his catharsis of his, his middle school bullying out in these shows because I think the smell thing, I think he was called smelly as a kid. And I also think at some point somebody took his very realistic souvenir lightsaber and broke it because that guy is so against Jedi's using their light. He will do anything but have them use their lightsabers. I mean, we've seen yeah. some cool lightsaber battles, but he's like, I mean, he'll have characters like forego. I don't need that anymore. It's like somebody snapped his Yoda lightsaber over their knee <laughs> And called him Free Coney or something like that. And like, <laughs> so, or Filoner. Filoner! I yeah. like that. Anyway, uh, on a happier note, what about those damn witches of Dathomir? Or the Dathomir, and what about their magic? Are we going to learn more about them? Are we setting up? There's got to be, I mean, come on, Kathleen Kennedy. Are we getting a Night Sisters uh, spinoff? Well, no, we are going back in time. Like, 
the Acolyte takes place in a period where the Night Sisters were more active, right? Is that or am I missing? I would up? think so. Yeah, yeah. I would. I'm going to be surprised now going into the Acolyte if the if the Night Sisters talking about you know Morgan Elspeth was like we existed at a time before we had calendars, like yeah. So the Acolyte's got to tie in with the Night Sisters, but I think that might be kind of our Night Sisters spinoff. Uh, you know, clearly Disney loves having witch content with an Agatha spinoff. Um, you know, we love witches. Yeah. I think. Uh, we're definitely going to learn what are in those containers, those mm. coffins or caskets, whatever yes. you think they are. That is one mystery that, like, if this show doesn't show us what's in the caskets, I think that's one that we could be rightfully upset by. Yeah. Because that, you know, you got to un- open the box. Um, but I don't know if we're going to learn much more about their historical ties with the Zepho. Um, while it does have the Sith Urquhart language over the door of that Peridian fortress, um... We also see Zepho hieroglyphs on the background wall of the Coruscant courtroom. Mm. And it's just like, I just kind of think the set designers like these hieroglyphs and like to put them everywhere. Mm. And I don't know if it, if we're meant to like really draw any big plot implications from that. But I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope the word Zepho gets spoken aloud on this show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would be... Uh... There'll be a big win for 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 all of us Cal Kestis fans too, with all the Zepho yeah. talk in uh, yeah. Jedi was of Jedi Fallen Order. So, do we think that they're going to be able to land the bird on this one, or land the ghost, quote unquote? Is this all going to be an Empire Strikes Back style setup for a season two, uh-huh. or or is this part of Filoni's planned Mando verse movie, or even a Defender style team up? Will there be a Defender style team up show before the movie, or is the movie the team up? What are we getting here? Yeah, that really is a good question because, you know, Filoni is a type of storyteller that it's really fun to live with him week to week. Um, But when you look at the, like, the big picture of his seasons of content, sometimes the arcs are just all over the place. And you don't really know whose story we're we're telling here. The show is called Ahsoka, but it's been just as much a Sabine story. It's been just as much an Anakin story. It's been as much, like... Uh, a Balin Skull story and a Thrawn story. There's no clear protagonist. And I would say like Ahsoka has been largely a reactionary passive protagonist on the show. Mm. Um, But I do think what's going to happen is I would be surprised if we got a setup for a season two of anything Ezra or Sabine. I think this season's going to wrap up the Ezra Sabine storyline. I think they're going to be back on Lothal with a Loth cat feeding it together. Uh, I think just the way episode seven ended with like, I'm ready to go home. Like I think Iman Isfande has been perfect casting for the show, but I don't think he's someone that like Lucasfilm wants to build like a second season around. Mm. Um, he just came in so late on the show that, yeah, he just doesn't seem like we're, we're going to follow him for a second season. Mm. If we get one, um, I think this season's going to wrap up that, but I think Thrawn, the fact that Thrawn did come in so late, I think Thrawn's going to make it out of this uh, season alive and that we're going to end with Thrawn in a position of power and it's going to either set up a second season with Ahsoka and Thrawn or like just the Thrawn movie and Thrawn could come in as a background character in season four of The Mandalorian or in uh, or in Skeleton Crew or both. Mm. I agree. I, I think I think you're right. The, all signs for the Ezra and Sabine arc seem to be like their destiny is back on Lothal. Right? I mean, yeah. first of all, someone's watching that cat right now. Someone's watching that loft cat, feeding it dry food. Probably no, yeah. wet, probably hasn't had wet food in, in weeks. No idea. Yeah, it's hopefully, it's, uh, I like to think it's Ryder Azadi, it's Clancy Brown and yes. Jai Kel kind of trading off shifts. Yeah. And they're like, are you scooping out the litter box? And they're both, they're both claiming that they're doing it every day, but we know <laughs> they're waiting like three days to do it. Like we all do when we house it, people's cats, uh, cats. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do a let's let's end with a little heat check here yeah. before we go into the finale. How have we been feeling? Like what what does this finale need to deliver to us to make us feel rewarded on Tuesday night when we tune into it? Uh, I I think I've overall I've been feeling good about this show. Uh, I have enjoyed. I have at least enjoyed every episode. Bordered on gleeful Star Wars viewing on several of the episodes. I thought they'd done some interesting things. Obviously, as it is always the case with these Star Wars shows and many times with these Marvel shows, there's more. I want more. I want things things to be focused on and there's just not enough time. If everybody ends up back in the main Star Wars galaxy 
with a little extra peril to this new republic that just seems so blind to any possible threats to them. And we're gearing up for the next step in the evolution of why the First Order came to be and why uh, the New Republic eventually fell, I'll be happy as a clam. I don't need to see a major death. I don't need to see a major revelation. I would love, I would love, love, love the idea of explanation of Force ghosts and how they appear to Jedi or Force users to continue to be explored and I know it's kind of a, a, a finale gimmick to have a Force Ghost as a reveal, but to me, it works. So I'd love to see a little more Force Ghosting. But overall, if the, if the main gang ends back up in the main Star Wars galaxy and Thrawn is back and more threatening than ever, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I, I'm feeling similar, Tommy. I think this show has been such an interesting ride week to week. Um, I very much enjoyed it, and I love the big swings Filoni takes with like world building and his expansions of our understanding of the Star Wars universe. I love that we went to a different galaxy. I love yeah. that we revisited the world between worlds. That it uh, it, it set up the promise of a live action Clone Wars, mm -hmm. and if this is all we ever get of a live action Clone Wars. I'm good. I feel like this and Attack of the Clones. Has yeah. me covered. It was so cool to see that and to bring Anakin back. So for the finale, I don't need any big cameos. I feel like this this show between Hayden coming back with C-3PO, I don't mm -hmm. need Maul. I don't need Kanan. If it gives me that, awesome. But I think we need, uh, at least I need an Ezra Zeb reunion. I need a big hug between those two. Mm -hmm. I need to know what's in the boxes. And, uh, and please, if, if you could just give me just a... Uh, if you still have time to edit this episode, just put in a little whisper that Ray Stevenson can react to in a shot that sounds a bit like Tom Baker. That's yeah. all I really want. But yes. like, I'm not expecting it. I like, yeah. I really just think we might have been getting a lot of uh, Ray Stevenson screen time just to show how good of an actor he is, and that I don't know how much of a future he is. But I think Tommy, if they wanted to explore Balin Skull in a in a Tales of the Jedi animated episode in the future, mm -hmm. could yeah. be a cool, really cool journey for the character. Yes. I think we will all watch it. But other than that, yeah, I don't need big cameos. I hope none of these characters. Die because they're also good yep um and i just want thrawn to make one cool strategic choice that surprises all of us yes like that's it uh yep. just again just show how smart this guy is absolutely we'll leave it there for this uh first episode of the sneak peek, sneak peek. hang on Ooh. i'll never tell who's Ooh. who's <laughs> Who's sneaking around? Oh, God, they're going to gif us and make fun of us. <laughs> I don't care. Shame me, Internet. I don't care. Uh, we used to do a segment called Find My Shame. Um, I don't know if I want to do that ever again, but remember we used to do Find My Shame. Oh, mine's fun. all in the backyard, buried in strategic <laughs> holes. All right. <laughs> Um, so we got a big week coming up on uh, the New Rockstars Network, the New Rockstars channel, The Break Room, and The Deep Dive. We got our Ahsoka reaction to the finale coming Tuesday night. Uh, we have our Ahsoka, fina uh, Ahsoka, Ahsoka finale breakdown coming Wednesday. Uh, Loki is coming uh, to Disney Plus this week. We got our premiere reaction coming Thursday evening, and then our uh, Loki premiere breakdown coming a bit later Thursday night. Uh, we also over on The Deep Dive. We're talking, I'm working currently on a breakdown of James Cameron's 1986, Aliens, uh, which is a response to my breakdown of my favorite film, Ridley Scott's Alien, 1979, which you can watch right now on the Deep Dive channel. Uh, and then we also have a breakdown, since it's October, we're doing some horror, and uh, we're going to do Jordan Peele's Get Out, which might nice. be the best uh, debut fil feature film by a first-time director. Yeah, most of the time, directors' first films are some weird project, but like Jordan Peele was able to like perfectly realize his brilliant film, and that was like his first movie he had ever made. Um, so it's an amazing film. Uh, and then right now, I believe you can see New Rockstar's breakdown of the first three episodes of Gen V on Amazon Prime Video. That's the boys' spinoff. Such a good show. And if you guys really love our breakdown of the first three episodes, who knows? We might be able to do breakdowns of every single episode this season. But it's a really cool show. Check it out. Um, okay. Follow New Rockstars on all social platforms. You can follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtold. You can follow me at EA Voss. Uh, and we'll see you next week for uh, for more great nerd content. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Bye.